global game delays, and more coming up on today's episode of the Lays and Tech News. Hey Gadgeteer, you're just in time for the latest episode of the world's only 3-in-1 show on tech, gadgets, and gaming news. That's right, this is the Lays and Tech News. My name is Taylor American. If you're new here, pause the episode real quick, hit the subscribe button, and then, uh, you know, continue playing the episode so that, um, you can obviously continue listening to this episode, but also by doing that, you ensure that you don't miss out on the latest that we have news-wise going on around these parts. And uh, this is, week is shaping up to be an interesting week. Um, speaking of well, global game delays, um, starting to affect a fair amount of larger games and, and servers in the U.S. and guaranteed Europe. Um, as as things progress and continue on here also we're going to be taking a look at uh well sony's ps5 reveal uh so we're excited about that we are expecting some news on wednesday we'll be getting to that very shortly here we'll also be taking a look at remarkable's redesigned e-paper tablet a uh, new more powerful and more papery if it could be called that uh tablet reader and finally, we'll be taking a look at Core, a multiplayer game creation and sharing tool, and uh, one I think you'll find quite interesting. But before we can get to that, let's take a look back on today in tech history. All right, today is March 17th, 2020. On this day in 1988, Apple Computer famously sues Microsoft Corporation for copyright infringement in its Windows operating system. Apple eventually lost the lawsuit in 1995, and, uh, well, the two have been feuding ever since. So, uh, yeah. Apple and Microsoft, I tell ya. You guys have two different products. It's kind of similar, but they're geared towards different subsets of people who... For one reason or another, prefer one type of OS to another and, and the products that follow from that. But anyways, with that out of the way, let's head on over to today's feature story. And oh, where's the little segment swoosh thing? Well, there is none. Because this news is uh, kind of breaking from Tech News Gadget. I haven't been able to write up an exact article on this yet in its entirety. Um, still in research phase, but I wanted to share the news as it develops um ongoing i don't know if i'm ever actually going to publish it as an official article this might just suffice for now so if you're listening or watching here's a news update a lot of games are being delayed by um i guess the, the, the things happening around the world uh in terms of schools closing temporarily um, businesses being closed, people being encouraged to just stay home for the time being um, amidst what's happening in the world, just trying to prevent some things from developing or becoming worse. Uh, but with that, <laughs> I made a post on my uh, personal Facebook profile earlier today about how kind of like the gamers and the nerds and geeks kind of knew all this was coming it's almost like we trained for all this we just hang out inside by ourselves playing a video game you know with our friends with groups of people online virtually you know not having to see hear each other in that same room because you're all kind of in your own separate um houses uh, so we're, we're fine with this but uh, unfortunately with schools closing and, and, and some restaurants and, and other businesses closing, depending on the industry, um, temporarily, it's actually led to, and here's the really ironic thing, people flocking towards entertainment, gaming, and um, one of the unfortunate side effects of that is we now have peak load on servers at all times. World of Warcraft has delays. Overwatch has a queue for logging in. Um, Warzone, which is a game that, that just came out last week, is dealing with server crashes and, and people being kicked out of matches just because they can't handle the load. Uh, probably the same with Apex Legends and uh, League of Legends being in a queue for that. And 
probably Destiny 2, a lot of the big top tier games that everybody kind of gravitates to and, and, and goes to play as their staple game are now coming under increased stress because peak time is now all the time because all the kids are home from school all the time. And it's not just, you know, one of those weekend type events where more players are on and, and now you have more problems to deal with. I guarantee Fortnite might be having some problems too. I haven't actually checked on Fortnite, but uh, I wouldn't put it past them to be dealing with some delays. What is that? Patch day just came out and things are kind of difficult. Yep, I was right. So how do we deal with this? With all this peak time happening in, across all of these major games, um, and it'll be ongoing for the time being at least. Give it about a couple of weeks to a month and, and things should slowly start to taper off and resume to normal depending on how the companies adjust and people's playing requirements adjust. Um, but that being the case, here are a couple of tips. If you are dealing with a favorite game that you do want to play that you hate waiting in the queue for um, and you'd rather not be kicked out of or errored out of or or, or bugged out um, try finding a secondary game that's maybe relatively new or maybe an old retro game that you can go back to for the time being or or a game that you've had set off on the side that you enjoy playing maybe it's a single player adventure exploratory RPG type game uh, you can just lose yourself in it for hours and uh, not really worry about having to access a server multiplayer system things like that um, maybe play those type of games for now just to tide you over or the second option which is a really good option go outside don't actually need to sit in front of a computer you don't need to sit in front of a TV and, I, and I'm speaking to the crowd here as much as I am but also I, I spend a fair enough amount of time outside anyways but outside is great um, you're able to go visit maybe a forest, a, a, a lake, a beach, through the ocean, something, maybe just to walk around the block, just to, I don't know, disconnect, take some time off, take a break, slow down, and, uh, you know, it's fine. I, just just consider it that for, for the time being, if you can't play your favorite game. I know it's frustrating. It's like, well, what else am I supposed to do? I feel cooped up all day. Well, you can always break out the good old chessboard. Or Checkers, or Stratego, or Risk, or Settlers of Catan, whichever you uh, fancy. Um, maybe brush up on your skills on that. Um, but I just, uh, I kind of, I, I had a feeling this was going to happen that uh, all of these game servers were going to hit peak all the time, get overloaded, and we're start reaching more problems and errors and game companies are going to say this is great people are showing up to play but we can't have the server capacity to suffice all of them what do we do um so yeah if you've been experiencing it don't worry you're not the only one there are plenty of other people there are plenty of down detector reportings going on people complaining on twitter people complaining on facebook people complaining on twitch mixer and facebook and uh everywhere else you want to complain reddit um so yeah just you'll be okay um, play another game, play an offline game, maybe watch the TV for a little bit, talk to your family, talk to your friends, go outside, enjoy the time off. Um, that's all I'm really going to share on that. But if you have anything you'd like to share or pointers that you want to give, be sure to let us know. We'd love to hear from you. If you're watching via YouTube, leave us a comment. And uh, if you're listening via the podcast, leave us a comment on twitter we are at tech news gadget now let's head on over to our next story okay well let's see if we can get this to load up here because sometimes they don't want to load there we go thank you cnet um sony's playstation 5 reveal yes they are revealing it they've been hush hush on several details and, and quiet for longer than people would want to it to be but it's it is what it is um by the way if you're listening um via podcast and you haven't subscribed already head on over to latest in tech news .com or open the podcast app of your choice and if you haven't clicked subscribe already and you're listening to it uh, hit that subscribe so that you don't miss out but uh, this is also a great reminder if you are on the go we do have a podcast available for you in whichever app 
you want to listen in iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, you name it, Google Podcast, we got it. But the PlayStation 5 is set for a holiday 2020 release, but much of the system is still a mystery. Sony looks to remedy that on Wednesday, the 18th, with a video focused on the upcoming console's architecture. The PlayStation Maker tweeted Tuesday that it will offer a deep dive into the PS5 on Wednesday. Lead system architect Mark Cerny will host the presentation. And if you are interested, you can watch tomorrow, Wednesday, the 18th, at blog.us.playstation.com. So they are planning to start at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, at the PlayStation blog. Now, this video was originally planned as a session at the Game Developers Conference, according to the PlayStation Japanese Twitter account. Conference organizers canceled GDC, uh, which was supposed to be starting yesterday. Um, and so far, we've only had PS5 details come out in October with teasers about the system's hardware and controller. In February, Sony created the console's website, although no new info has been added since it went up. But um be interesting, uh, seeing as how Microsoft revealed the specs for its Xbox Series X on Monday. According to leaks, the two new consoles will have similar hardware, including AMD-made CPUs and GPUs, along with solid-state drives. We'll just probably get more information in terms of that, but um, Wednesday will be where all the news is at for the PlayStation 5. We finally have some more information to sink our teeth into, because it's just been a little bit too long. I'm, I'm kind of itching to probably upgrade my playstation 4 although it's a collector's item so it kind of sucks that i'd have to give it up it's the batman one the batman arkham i got it collector's edition i really don't want to give that up but if i'm hearing what i've been hearing about the playstation 5 it's definitely a system i'm looking forward to getting and having long term so that being said let's head on over to the next story all right next up we got Remarkable's redesigned e-paper tablet is more powerful and more papery. Now, this comes to us from TechCrunch, and if you are interested in seeing any images or video that go along with today's show or the articles that we've mentioned, head on over to youtube.com forward slash technewsgadget and subscribe because we do post videos there um, of our show. So just in case you're listening via the podcast and you're wondering, hey, do I get video too yep you do and uh if you want to stay tuned to the video hit the subscribe button and you won't miss out now um the author who wrote this article is a fan of remarkable a tablet with a paper-like display that's focused on text and sketching rather than rich media and games the sequel to the original announced today looks to make a good thing even better designed for the creation and consumption of monochromatic content like long documents ebooks notes and sketches the remarkable sets itself apart as a more minimalist alternative or or a complement to the likes of the ipad or surface keep in mind the device was crowdfunded and has sold more than 100,000 units meanwhile the company has grown and attracted a 15 million dollar a round one season in a retrospect that the money help launch this successor so the most obvious change is to the design it has a bold asymmetrical look with a chrome band along the left side indicating the tablet's main use as an alternative to a paper notebook hold it with your left hand and write with your right see sorry lefties uh, the new tablet is just 4.7 millimeters thick thinner than the ipad pro and sony's competing digital paper tablets both of which are 5.9 millimeters now, let's be honest, at these levels of thinness, it's kind of getting hard to tell the difference, but it's quite an accomplishment nonetheless, and we got some pictures here for you. Probably the best thing about the original Remarkable, however, was how good it felt to write and draw on, and the company has spent the last few years improving that wherever they can. For one thing, they already very nearly small delay of about 40 milliseconds between touching the screen with the stylus and a line appearing has been nearly cut in half. And that's an area where every milli unit counts. The leg on a real pen and paper is zero, of course, and while the Remarkable was good, there was still a very slight leg, especially in making large gestures, gestures, one of those words, oral lines. So uh, they improved on that a little bit. Um, you should know more itself once you get your hand on it. But uh, spec-wise, it's 10.3 inches, monochrome, 
18 by 1872 by 1404 and a resolution for 226 dpi and they do have an aspirational promo video that we'll be playing here a little bit introducing remarkable 2 the Whoa, next generation the remarkable 2 and that's it that's all we're getting today um <laughs> Also, the software running on it has re received several major updates, uh, so it it's um, finally getting more features that people were looking for, namely saving articles from the web. Unfortunately, they didn't answer any specific requests of adding a pocket integration, deciding instead to roll their own with a Chrome plugin that sends a reformatted web page to the device. So, Kind of interesting. The company is claiming a three times boost to battery life using the same 3000 mAh battery based on performance improvements throughout and a more efficient but powerful dual core ARM processor. That means two weeks of use and 90 days of standby. So, um, yeah, this is welcome news because, quite frankly, the battery life and power management on the first one wasn't as great, but uh, yeah. Uh, let's see price wise remarkable for all its merits was not cheap at seven hundred dollars that was the original one the remarkable two which is coming out will sell for three hundred and ninety nine dollars if you pre-order and comes with a marker in a nice folio case for anyone who is on the fence about the first one the sequel may prove irresistible so if you're interested in that well you have more details there for the remarkable and can decide Accordingly, moving on. All right, and finally, our last article that we got for you today. Yes, I know it's a short show. It's difficult being able to plan all this out with everything else I have going on behind the scenes and, and uh, things going on on the website. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been quite a handful uh, inside and out, but uh, I wanted to make sure I got these highlighted articles out for you to uh, enjoy and share. But this one is a gaming article, and it's introducing a new game called Core. Core is a multiplayer game creation and sharing tool now in free open alpha. It's actually quite interesting. It's an Unreal-based game editor that can be used to build games with or without scripting. Now, for those of you wondering, uh, a 3D multiplayer game creator is a platform for distributing and playing these games kind of like Fortnite Creative, but without a big Battle Royale game layered on top of it. And as of today, it's free to play in open alpha, so you can try it now. And I actually have a link that goes directly to it, coregames.com. They do have a trailer that goes along with it, so there is a YouTube video in the link that we'll have over at technewsgadget.net for you to uh, click on and enjoy. And actually, if you're listening via the podcast, the link to it is right there in your show notes. So one other perk that uh, you should be subscribed to the podcast because most of you who consume the show are subscribed via the podcast. So you get your news immediately. Now, if you're wondering, you can't import your own 3D models or other assets, but you can stick together the provided models to build new things, which can be saved as prefabs and shared with other creators. You can also create and borrow Lua scripted UI elements, NPC behaviors, guns, and so on. While competitive multiplayer games, which currently support 16 players, are the focus, developer Manticore Games has told the author that you can make cooperative and single-player games as well. They did have a remote demo last week. It's actually uh, quite simple to put together a multiplayer sniping game. Roughly took a couple of minutes and required no scripting. The developers also dropped in a portal gun made by another user and it instantly worked as expected. The terrain editing is voxel-based, so you can sculpt mountains and dig caves into them. Core is built on the Unreal Engine, but its level editor is entirely its own. The Core client can be launched through a browser call, which loads up a specific user-created game, and the game loads very quickly. Uh, obviously, if you have the Core client, you already have all the assets being used. That gives Core an interesting capability. Users can place portals in their games, which lead to other Core games. Interesting. Um, the hope seems to be that some number of user creations will blow up the way mods like Auto Chess blew up, but the author here could see Core being fun for Discord groups and other communities who only want to amuse themselves. One idea for how to use it, have every more member of a group design one leg of an obstacle course 
link them together with portals, and then race. As for how Core will be monetized, player avatars are persistent between games, and so premium cosmetics are an option there. Manticore Games also says that users will be able to support their favorite creators with tips and subscriptions, the specifics which will be coming out at a later date. Uh, matter of fact, they are on Twitch if you want to see them showing off the creation tool. They are at slash core live on Twitch. Otherwise, you can just go to coregames.com, download the open alpha from there. And uh, if you have any questions, don't ask me because I don't know what's going on. But um, does this sound interesting to you? Is this something you might be interested in? Let me know down in the comments. If you're watching via the blog, if you're on Twitter, we are at Tech News Gadget. And if you're watching via YouTube, Drop a like and feedback in the comments. And with that, that wraps up this episode of The Latest in Tech News. Thanks for tuning in. New episodes every weekday. The Latest in Tech News can be found on every major platform, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, Overcast, and more. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to let us know by clicking that like button if you're watching via YouTube. And if you're listening via the podcast, be sure to share this episode with a friend. Also, double check that you are subscribed so that you don't miss the next episode. I'm your host, Taylor Merrick, and remember, for the latest in tech, gadget, and gaming news, visit technewsgadget.net. Pretty much, keep being awesome, guys, and I'll see you on the flip side.